Uh, my name is Tom Bird. I'm an incident meteorologist, work for the National Weather Service, and we're specially trained uh, meteorologists with the Weather Service that are uh, folks that go out to large incidents, especially wildfires, uh, provide on-site uh, forecasting and briefing weather services for the incident management teams. You know, a lot of people, when they find out that a meteorologist is, is on the fire, assigned with the team, are surprised by that because they're just expecting firefighters. But uh, there's three things that impact the way a fire behaves, and that would be the topography, and so the lay of the land, the mountains, the valleys, the ridges, and that kind of stuff. And then the, what's burning is called the fuels, you know, the trees, the bushes, the grasses, and stuff like that. And the third piece of that triangle is the weather. Now out of those three, the one that changes the most is the weather. The one that's the hardest to see is the weather. And so it's, it's really difficult to get a grasp and a, a good situational awareness on that piece of the puzzle. And so they bring in a, what we call a technical specialist, a meteorologist, to be able to, to handle that piece of, of the puzzle for the firefighters so that they'll know, uh, get the full picture on, on what they're walking into every day and, and know the conditions that they're going to be experiencing. Well, of course, here at ICP, I've got to be in touch with uh, observations, and that includes, you know, what's the temperature, the relative humidity, the cloud cover, the winds, that's on the ground. And then up in the sky, you know, we have the satellites to look down and tell me uh, what kind of cloud cover we have. Then we have radars across the country that I can look at and find out where the showers and thunderstorms are. But then out in the field on the fire, we also have what we call IROS, which is an incident remote automated weather station, basically. And so right there on the fire right now, we have four of those deployed on the Cameron Peak fire here uh, that tell me right now what is the relative humidity out there, how dry or wet it might be, what are the winds doing, what's the temperature doing, what's the cloud cover. All that kind of information is really important for me because it helps me verify the forecast I'm putting out, but also gives me advance notice of what's happening today so that I can go forward in time and forecast a more accurate forecast. I mean, there, there's two primary reasons why I'm here, and they're both real important. Uh, the first is, and foremost, and this goes for pretty much everybody in the in incident management team, is we're here to provide a service that keeps uh, the folks out in the field safe and so that they come home every afternoon or go back into camp uh, safely. And so being that weather is one of the things that impacts the behavior of the fire most critically, and like I said, it's hardest to see and it changes the most often, you have to have someone that's just solely dedicated to have eyes on the weather so that I can get on the radio at a moment's notice, call out into the field and tell them that I'm seeing some changing weather that might impact their safety. And the second reason that I'm here is for tactical reasons, so that any kind of strategies that the team and the folks out in the field want to employ to try to contain the fire uh, would be successful. Because you know they could try one thing and the weather could be totally against that being something that would be effective. I could let them know that ahead of time. And what we tend to do is like, I let them know three to five days ahead of time when we're seeing a significant wind change, a wind shift, a speed in wind, or a, a significant drying trend, or a warming trend, all these things that would increase fire behavior. I let them know days in advance so that then they can start rearranging resources and moving them to a part of the fire that may become more critical uh, somewhere. And that, that gives them early time to prep and that allows them finally to have a more successful outcome. A day for, for an IMET starts really early and ends pretty late. We do a briefing at 0700 hours, and so that's a, just that, seven o'clock in the morning is when we all gather and we brief the crews out in the field. But I have to prepare for that, so I usually come in about an hour and a half ahead of that time. So we're looking at f between five and 5.30. I'm up, back in here at the office, at the laptop, looking at the conditions that happened overnight, reviewing yesterday's weather, looking at my forecast to make sure that I still think it's accurate, looking at the latest satellite, radar, model data, all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to get on top of everything and get really comfortable inside here that when I talk to those guys at seven o'clock and those gals out there at seven o'clock in the morning, that I'm really confident that my forecast is gonna be on or else I tell them what changes I think ought to be made to that. So it's an early day, it's a long day. The whole rest of the day I'm monitoring weather, preparing forecasts for the next day. And then at the end of the day, I'm looking at the newest model data so I can start that cycle again for tomorrow.